So let us summarize. You now understand the true function of currency. You also understand that Bitcoin is a currency generated by multiple nodes on a peer-to-peer -peer network. But wait, that doesn't make sense. If any node can just print coin whenever they want, then the world will be flooded with Bitcoin. Now, I'm not an economist, but I'm pretty sure that oversupply would lead to a drop in value. And as we learned in the last episode, stored value is a very important function of currency. So there has to be more to it. And there is. So in this episode, we will start to look at some of the mechanics of the Bitcoin network. We know from earlier episodes that when a user on the network makes a transaction, that is, sends coin to somebody else on the network, that transaction gets added to a decentralized ledger known as the blockchain. But how does this happen? Let's take an example. Let's say John sends three Bitcoins to Jenny. This transaction gets sent out to every node on the Bitcoin network. And the different computers are running specialized Bitcoin software that allows them to check that this transaction has set aside a certain set of rules. If the transaction satisfies these rules, it is approved and each node will add the transaction to a pool of other recent transactions that have also been approved. This is known as a block. It should be noted that because of the geographic location of the nodes and the time it takes for packets to traverse the networks, it is possible that each node may not have exactly the same transactions in their block, but they will be very, very close. Once the transactions have been added to a block, each node will start to solve a mathematical formula. This process is known as mining. The first node to solve the formula will have their block added to the blockchain. They will also receive a reward of bitcoins and all the transaction fees from the transactions in their block. The winning block is sent out to all the other nodes in the network. These nodes will validate that the block has correctly solved the mathematical formula and they will also add the block to the ledger. This is how every node of the network has the same blockchain. It is called decentralized consensus because every node can achieve consensus on the contents of the blockchain without the need of a central authority. The mathematical formula is solved approximately every 10 minutes. Now details of this formula will be discussed in later episodes, but for this episode just know that every 10 minutes a new block is added to the blockchain. Now as more computers join the network to solve the mathematical equation in hopes of winning Bitcoin rewards, the difficulty of the equation is adjusted to make sure the 10 minute per block timeline is maintained. Therefore, as faster computers with stronger computing power join the network, the equation gets harder. In 2009, you used to be able to mine for Bitcoin with a regular laptop. You can't do that anymore. The reward issued to the node that solved the equation serves as an incentive to miners for taking on the responsibility of providing computer power needed to mine for Bitcoin and secure the network. Currently, the reward is 12.5 Bitcoin. This number is cut in half every four years. And by the year 2141, there will be no more Bitcoins issued. At that point, there should be approximately 21 million Bitcoins in the ecosystem. In 2009, the reward was 50 Bitcoin. In 2012, it fell down to 25 Bitcoin. And in 2016, it dropped to 12.5 Bitcoin, which is the current reward issued at the time that this video was recorded. Whew. That's a lot of information. So why don't we take a break right here? In the next episode, we will do a lab and give you guys a live look at the blockchain in action.